Hello and welcome to our next lecture on space time codes. Let us start with a brief outline of today's lecture. What we will study today are real orthogonal design for space time block codes. Then we will look at the generalization of real orthogonal designs. Then we will move on to the domain of complex orthogonal design and then we would like to generalize that concept. Finally, we will look at some examples. Let us do a quick recap as to what we have done so far. We have already introduced the concept of space time codes and how it gives diversity gain. We specifically looked at Alamothy code as a very interesting example of space time block codes. We delved into diversity gain and coding gain and we looked at some examples along the way. Let us revisit the anatomy of a space time block code STBC for short and what we realized was that an information source pumping in bits of information, what we do is we take two b bits at a time and of this first b bit is used to select one signal from the signal constellation and then the next b bits are used to pick up another signal S2 from the signal constellation. So, I have S1 corresponding to the first B bits and S2 corresponding to the next B bits. Thus, we have a tuple S1, S2 which is coming out from this uh, signal constellation block and this is fed to the space time encoder. In this example, we have two transmit antennas therefore, we picked up two symbols S1 and S2. What they do is load symbol S1 onto the element 1 and load S2 onto antenna element 2. So, Tx1 sends out S1, Tx2 sends out X2. There is only one receiver because we have argued that in most cases it is difficult to put multiple antennas on the receiver, but you can have multiple antennas. In this example, we are only looking at one single receiver antenna element. So, the S1 goes through a channel gain of H1, whereas S2 undergoes a channel gain of H2 and we receive it and of course, we have additive white Gaussian noise added up N1. But this we do in the first time slot. As the name suggests, it is a space time block code. So, the space element is coming from the antenna and the time is the different time slots that we are going to send out. So, we sent out S1 and S2 from the two antenna elements in the first time slot. Now, for those same two B bits, we have picked up S1 and S2, but in the second time slot, what we do is we send out minus S2 star and S1 star. S1 and S2 belong to a complex uh, constellation. So, we have the complex conjugates here. So, what we do is we send out from antenna element 1 minus S2 star and S1 star. This is just an example. I can have other ways of doing it and then we send out these two go through the channel gains and we get noise n to add it and so we have two uh, received signals in time slot 1 and channel time slot 2. Of course, we need the estimates of the channels h1 and h2 and then we have a combining strategy which goes through the ML decoder. So, in this example, we have talked about the space antenna 1 and antenna 2 and time, time period 1 and time period 2. So, we have this matrix of symbols that we want to transmit and this is kind of the code, the space time block code that is being used. Now, we make some observations because if you represent x with those matrix, then x Hermitian x happens to be x1 absolute value squared plus x2 absolute value squared i2 where i2 is the identity matrix. Now, the channel gains h1 and h2 are complex and they can be modeled as alpha 1 e to the power j phi 1 and alpha 2 e to the power minus j phi 2 and we can multiply it out to get the first received signal in time slot 1 as r1. This is simply S1 with channel gain H1 plus S2 with channel gain H2 plus N1. 
Similarly, in the second time slot, we have minus h1 s2 star plus h2 x1 star plus n2. Here it should be s1. So, we have this received signal r2 in the second time slot. Now, the observation right here is that r1 depends both on s1 and s2 and r2 also depends on s2 and s1 simultaneously. But we have this interesting combining scheme wherein we have r1 tilde equal to h1 complex value complex conjugate r1 plus h2 into r2 star which means that if we have the knowledge about the channel gains h1 and h2 which are complex we can use this combining scheme to get r1 tilde and similarly r2 tilde but if you work out this then r1 tilde comes out to be this expression and r2 tilde correspondingly gets this one the interesting observation is r1 tilde only depends on s1 so suddenly with this combining scheme we have been able to decouple the decoding so r1 is only dependent on s1 and r2 is only dependent on s2 so we can use the maximum likelihood decoding strategy and recover using the single symbol decoding in the last class we therefore came up with this rank and determinant criteria for designing space time block codes and what we came up with is the rank and the determinant criteria. So, we defined this matrix A um, and we said that it should be full rank for any two code words C i not equal to C j and the smallest value of the R rank over any pair of code words provides a diversity gain of R into m where m is the number of received antennas. This is the uh, rank criteria and the determinant criteria says that in order to achieve maximum coding gain right. So, we have already talked about the diversity gain, but in order to achieve the maximum coding gain the minimum determinant of the matrix A should be maximized for any two code words which are not equal. So, we quickly revisit the Alamothy scheme with n is equal to 2 transmit antennas and this is the code for the Alamothy scheme and if we have another uh, uh, pair of symbols and this matrix is denoted by C prime as follows, then we can go and find out how the diversity gain is obtained from the Alamothy code. So, diversity gain is obtained simply by looking at the slopes of the BR curves. So, on the x axis we can have the SNR, y axis we have the symbol error rate if you will and then if you look at with and without Alamothy code you see a distinct change in the slope which indicates the diversity gain. Now, a few uh, words about single symbol decoding we have realized the uniqueness of this Alamuthi code because this pair R1, R2 star is dependent only on S1 and S2 independently. So, you can have this estimates of X1 and X2 as simply as H1 absolute value squared plus H2 absolute value squared S1, S2. So, basically what it means is that your x1 tilde depends only on s1 and x2 tilde depends only on s2. Okay. So, this is the single symbol decoding which re reduces drastically the complexity at the decoder. So, you observe that this sigma sigma Hermitian is nothing but h1 squared plus h2 squared i2 and the generator matrix for the code is simply given by g. So, throughout this lecture this is how we will denote the generator matrix of the code for different cases. This is a 2 cross 2 complex design, uh, but we will look at real designs and complex designs in our subsequent slides. So, what is interesting about this gender matrix is if you take G G Hermitian you come up with um, a scaled identity matrix 
and this interesting fact allows us to decouple the uh, decoding problem and we do symbol by symbol decoding we have one single symbol at a time which is required to take the decision and the reason is because we have an orthogonal design so g g hermitian is simply this identity matrix multiplied by this term so the key part is this orthogonal design and now let us focus on what good orthogonal designs are available how to go about doing it do orthogonal designs of all size exist or not let us look at these questions so let us now start on real orthogonal design so let us start with the definition a real orthogonal design of size n is an n cross n matrix okay g so the moment we are trying to define a space time block code which is real orthogonal we would simply represent it with a matrix g which is the generator matrix with entries consisting of only real elements drawn from plus minus x1 x1 x2 so and so forth till xn such that g transpose g is summation i is equal to 1 through n x i squared times this identity matrix of size n cross n. So, what is very interesting is it can be shown that only when n is 2, 4 or 8 do you have a real orthogonal design that this is possible otherwise you simply cannot have this condition being satisfied. We also note that G is proportional to an orthogonal matrix. Okay? So, I can have a proportionality, a constant also ahead in front of here. Let us look at these possibilities for n is equal to 2, 4 and 8. So, if you have generator matrix G2 as follows, then you can satisfy yourself by taking G2 transpose into G2 and you will get that there will be terms only along the diagonal and there will be zeros of diagonal. Similarly, this is the design for n is equal to 4. So, please note the convention is the same. This axis is the space axis, this axis is the time axis. So, if I were to implement a real life system with G4, I will divide my implementation into four time slots. In the first time slot, I will send out x1 through antenna element 1, x2 through antenna element 2, x3 from antenna element 3 and x4 from antenna element 4. And then wait for the next time slot wherein I will send out minus x2, x1, minus x4 and x3 and so and so forth for the four time slot. So, in four time slots, I have been able to send out four symbols x1, x2, x3 and x4. So, therefore, the rate is also 1. I have not compromised on the rate. Right? But what is interesting is if you take G4 transpose into G4, you will again get the values along the diagonal and there will be 0 terms of diagonal. So, again this is an orthogonal design which means you can happily go ahead and do single symbol decoding. So, the decoding complexity is again quite low. If you look at for n is equal to 8, again this is a real design and it is a real orthogonal design. You can verify G8 transpose into G8 will again give you only non-zero elements along the diagonal. And this is again the simple strategy. I have got eight antenna elements, right? And here are eight time slots. And this precisely tells you what to send at what time slot on what antenna. Okay? Again, single symbol decoding is possible. Unfortunately, beyond eight, we have no designs possible. It is possible to prove it. So, it is known that real orthogonal designs exist only for n is equal to 2, 4 and 8. 
So, how do we go beyond that? We have to generalize the orthogonal designs to non square real matrices of size t cross n. Earlier it was n cross n, but suddenly I want to have t which means I want to increase the number of time slots. So, it might take a hit on the rate. So, the number of time periods is denoted by t and the number of antenna elements is n and t is not necessarily equal to n. So, clearly for the n is equal to 2, 4 and 8 cases the generator matrix was a square matrix n was equal to t, but since we have no more such matrices for larger values of n we now resort to t cross n. So, these are non square matrices. So, what is the definition? A generalized real orthogonal design is a t cross n matrix. So, if we have to design a generalized real orthogonal design, we have to just come up with a matrix which is t cross n, but all the elements of this matrix, all the entries are real drawn from plus minus x 1 plus minus x 2 up to plus minus x k such that g transpose g is again uh, equal to i is equal to 1 through k x i squared i n where i n is an n cross n identity matrix. Okay. So, again only the diagonal terms exist rest are non zero rest all of diagonal terms are zero only the diagonal terms are non zero. But clearly now the rate has to be defined and rate is k over t right. So, t is of course uh, larger than k and therefore it is possible that the rate will be less than 1. But of course in real life we would like the rate to be as close to 1 if not 1. So, a generalized real orthogonal design with rate r is equal to 1 is called a full rate orthogonal design. So, if we are still in the domain of generalized real orthogonal design, but we are not talking about full rate design. Since the space time block codes from orthogonal designs have to have t is equal to k is equal to n and the rate r is equal to 1 and they form a special case of the generalized real orthogonal design. So, the already the case of n is equal to 2, 4 and 8 the orthogonal designs they were a special case of the generalized real orthogonal designs with rate r is equal to 1. Generalized real orthogonal designs provide full diversity and separate decoding of symbols. So, the diversity is there as discussed earlier and you have single symbol decoding. So, separate decoding of symbols exists. So, receiver complexity receiver time is both reduced. A real space time block code is defined as one of as one that uses g as a transmission matrix. So, we have already looked at the properties of g, g transpose into g should be uh, a matrix with only the diagonal elements as non zero. So, let us assume that the transmission is being carried out using a constellation consisting of two raised power b symbols we have discussed this before. So, this generalized real orthogonal design we will now make it g r o d standing for generalized real orthogonal design. So, let us now talk about the steps for generalized real orthogonal design. So, pick up a block of k b bits coming from the input stream. So, we have no worries getting enough bits to process. Today we are generating humongous amounts of bits, but what we do is we take up a block of k into b bits. Remember the constellation has signals coming from 2 raise power b uh, points in the constellation. So, based on this k b bits select k symbols from the constellation. So, the first b bits are used to pick up first symbol S 1, the second B bits are used to pick up S 2 and the last B bits are used to pick up S k. So, we have 
now s1 s2 up to sk symbols as coming mapped out of this kb bits so from my uh, generator um, for the space time block code i substitute xk to sk so now we have the code word coming as the generator matrix consisting of s1 s2 up to sk clearly this generator matrix is of the size t cross n so the transmission is done row wise which means in the first time slot send out row 1 in the second time slot send out row 2 because the rows represent the time axis the columns represent the antenna element the space axis so each row obviously of length n is transmitted at one time period using the n antenna element simultaneously at the time period t is equal to 1 2 3 up to t transmit the tth row of the c the code word c using the different antenna elements n is equal to 1 2 up to n so this much is pretty clear so thus the entry c t comma n of the code is transmitted from the antenna element n at the time period t that is the notation at the end of t time periods effectively k symbols would have been transmitted just justifying the rate r is equal to k by t so what does this mean intuitively t corresponds to the block length of the code let us show it using a block diagram for orthogonal space time block codes what we have done is taken k bit bits coming at a time divided this k b bits into b bits then b bits then b bits and so and so forth for each of the b bits i pick up one symbol from the constellation diagram so s1 corresponds to the first b bits s2 to the second and so and so forth and then i assign xk equal to sk use my generator matrix to generate the code c now this is a t cross n matrix and then i transmit the rows of c in each time period now let us talk about delay optimal design clearly as we increase the size of t i will use more and more time slots if i use more and more time slots then my delay would increase at the receiver side to get the decoded output so let us talk about this delay optimal where we minimize this t so in order to maximize the rate it is important to have the smallest value of the block length t this is obvious so the parameter t determines the decoding delay of the code because we cannot really start decoding until all the code words have been received okay so we have to wait till the last uh, transmission and uh, after t time slots and we would like to reduce this to the extent possible so what do we do let us define the delay optimal uh, design so an orthogonal design with minimum possible value of the block length t is called a delay optimal it is better to look at an example to illustrate the point so let us consider the following 4 cross 3 matrix so n is equal to 3 t is equal to 4 leading it to a t cross n matrix remember this is the space axis so we have three antenna elements and this is the time axis so i will be using four time slots so what this generator matrix tells us is in the first time slot send x1 from antenna 1 x2 from antenna 2 x3 from antenna 3 then wait for the next time slot and transmit minus x2 x1 minus x4 and so and so forth in the four time slots but we make a very interesting observation we just do not have three symbols to transmit we have x1 
up to x 4. So, in 4 time slots we have been judiciously distributed the symbols such that x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 4 all have been placed such that g transpose g again adheres to the definition of the orthogonal design. So, let us compute g transpose g and if you do so for this you will be surprised to find the answer as follows and the observation is that the diagonal elements are non-zero and rest all are zero. So, we have really in front of us a 4 cross 3 real orthogonal design, it is a generalized real orthogonal design because it is not a square matrix. Right? So, what are the observations regarding this design? T is equal to 4, n is equal to 3 as we observed, k is equal to 4, but the rate is 1. Okay. We did not compromise on the rate. So, it is a full rate generalized real orthogonal design. So, we have only used 3 transmit antennas because n is equal to 3, but we have judiciously used the 3 antenna elements in different time slots to send out the message which are single symbol decodable. Of course, it uses 4 time periods to do so. So, the delay increased a little bit. Right? Please remember we never had a 3 cross 3 solution for real orthogonal designs. We had 2 cross 2, 4 cross 4 and 8 cross 8. But when we went to the generalized domain, we have a 4 cross 3 solution and that is an interesting observation. So, it sends out 4 symbols using 4 time slots and the rate is unity. So, let us start back and uh, analyze it a little bit further. So, you have this 3 antenna elements sending out this first row in time slot 1, second row in time slot 2, third row in time slot 3 and fourth row in time slot 4. And if you want to depict it more clearly, you have this 3 antenna elements and 4 time slots and you exactly know which one you are sending in which time slots. Okay. So, this is actually the recipe for sending out the code based on this design. So, the important observation is that it is full rate, we have not compromised on the rate. So, it can be shown that for any number of transmit antennas n, there exists a full rate, real space time block code with block size t given by minimum of 2 raise power 4 c plus t. So, this rate full rate can be guaranteed provided you have a constraint on this block size t. The minimization is over all possible integer values, values of c and t. So, here this is the block size t and if you can have c and d as integers, then you can probably come up with this design and we will look at an example shortly. This c and d have some constraint, c should be greater than or equal to 0, d should be greater than or equal to 0 and 8 c plus 2 raise power d should be greater than or equal to n. So, if you can find c and d which can satisfy these conditions, then t can be found out by this minimum and then you can find out an example. So, let us look at the following example. We have an 8 cross 7 matrix for 7 transmit antennas. So, just by looking at this matrix, I know that there are 7 columns. So, 7 transmit antennas will be there. There are 8 rows. So, I will be using 8 time slots. Obviously, in the first time slot, I will be sending out this first row, second row in the second time slot and the 8th row in the 8th time slot. 
Now, before we proceed any further, we can quickly take G transpose into G and we will see whether only the diagonal elements are non-zero, rest are all zeros, which will give that it is a, an orthogonal design. So, we do that computation G transpose G and one can easily verify that you get this expression. So, this will guarantee single symbol decoding. But we also see that 8 cross 7 is a real orthogonal design with k is equal to 8 and you can do t as minimum of 2 raise power 4 c plus d equal to 8 because the integers which we found was c is equal to 0 and d is equal to 3. So, we satisfied those conditions and we were able to get this 8 cross 7 matrix. So, not only it tells you that this t cross n matrix exists, but you already have an example of what that matrix should look like. So, this is the condition we satisfied ourselves with that there exists a full rate r is equal to 1 real space time block code with block size given by this where the minimization is over C all possible integer values of C and D. In this example, you have R is equal to 1 because you had if you see 8 time slots and you have x 1 up to x 8. If you carefully observe, I am pushing through along x 1, x 2, x 3 up to x 8 in a distributed manner. So, in 8 time slots effectively I have sent out 8 symbols. So, my rate is indeed 1. So, G represents a full rate real orthogonal design which can be used with 7 transmit antennas. So, some observation orthogonal designs are not unique. Number 2, multiplying any orthogonal design G with a, un, with a matrix U, right? having the property U transpose U T U equal to 1. So, it results in another orthogonal design. Okay? So, deleting a column from an orthogonal design leads to another orthogonal design that can be used to design a space time block code with one less antenna. So, these are practical issues that we can look at if we have one design we can go to another design by deleting a row or a column depending upon how you look at it. So, deleting a column basically reduces one antenna element and you still have an orthogonal design left. This process is called shortening. If the original real orthogonal design is delay optimal then the shortened uh, design is also delay optimal. Now, we change gears slightly and we say look lot of our signal constellations are complex. So, are there complex orthogonal designs? Of course, we had looked at Alamoti to begin with. So, we know the answer is yes. So, let us define a complex orthogonal design. A complex orthogonal design of size n is an n cross n matrix G with entries consisting of complex elements drawn from plus minus x 1, x 2 up to x n and their complex conjugates x 1 star, x 2 star up to x n star right? or multiples of these by g is equal to under root of minus 1 such that g transpose g right, should be this. So, we actually should write g Hermitian g should be written in this form where i n is the n cross n identity matrix. And what is interesting is a real orthogonal design exists if and only if n is equal to 2. It can be shown that and this great design is that Alamoti code we have looked at. So, this is an example of a 2 cross 2 matrix which we have already seen as being an orthogonal design. It is the Alamoti code, but this is the only one complex orthogonal design which exists size 2 cross 2. So, it is obvious that we must graduate to the generalized complex orthogonal design. So, we define it quickly generalized co complex orthogonal design 
similar to the generalized version of the real orthogonal design is a T cross n matrix G with complex elements drawn from 0, x 1, x 2, x 3 and so on and so forth up to x k such that G Hermitian G is some kappa times summation of x i absolute value squared i n where i n is an n cross n identity matrix and kappa is a constant. So, it is possible to have kappa is equal to 1 by appropriately normalizing the elements of G, it still remains an orthogonal matrix and we can multiply as before with a unitary matrix then G prime equal to u times g is also a generalized complex orthogonal design. So, multiplication by unitary matrix as in the earlier case does not change, it still remains a generalized complex orthogonal design. So, let us use the acronym generalized complex orthogonal design G C O D. So, a G C O D design can be used to generate a rate r is equal to k by t space time code with n antenna elements. Again we do a similar thing, we assume that we are using a constellation consisting of 2 raised power b symbols and we look at the following steps as before take a big block of k b bits divided into b bits then again block of b bits and so on and so forth, use each block to pick up the symbols s 1, s 2 up to s k, we have done this before and then substitute x k for s k in the matrix G to generate the code C. So, this G matrix always have uh, the elements x 1, x 2 up to x k and once you substitute them the G generator matrix generates a code word, the code word uh, matrix becomes the C. So, this C matrix is of the size T cross n and it has a linear combination of S 1, S 2 up to S k and their conjugates because it is a complex design. So, at time period T is equal to 1 through T you transmit the T th row as before and then clearly the C T comma n is transmitted from antenna element n at time period T as before it is pretty much the same and we have transmitted effectively k symbols at the end of t time period thereby justifying that rate. So, some simple observations a complex space time block code constructed using a t cross n generalized complex orthogonal design provides a diversity of n cross m. So, n is the number of transmit antennas, m is the number of receive antennas. So, this is the diversity that is provided and it also results in separate maximum likelihood decoding, symbol by symbol decoding is possible. But please note there are three independent parameters, the number of transmit antennas n, the number of symbols k and the number of time periods t. And so, the transmission matrix generator matrix G is sometimes denoted by G subscript n k t. So, let us now try to conclude what we have studied in today's lecture. We started out with the notion of real orthogonal designs which provide single symbol decoding and full diversity and we realize that only n is equal to 2, 4 and 8 is possible for real orthogonal design that motivated us to look at generalized real orthogonal designs where we are working with uh, matrices which are not square and so you can have more number of time slots, but still it is possible to have rate r is equal to 1 and with then we define the notion of delay optimal. Then we moved on to complex orthogonal design where the elements in the generator matrix could be complex and we found out that only 2 cross 2 the Alamothy code exists as the only example of complex orthogonal design. Therefore, we moved over to the generalized complex orthogonal design. For both real orthogonal design and complex orthogonal design the generalized versions we define the steps as to how to go about 
designing and sending it. Finally, we looked at the examples for ROD, GROD, COD and GCOD. So, with that we come to the end of this lecture. Thank you.